Welcome back to another painting. Thanks for joining us this evening, or whatever time you're watching it, wherever you are. I'm going to work on the sky on this uh, fall-inspired painting. Um, this one is requested by Emily last week, so this one is uh, for her. And if you have any requests that you would like to see me paint or make an attempt at painting, leave them in the comments and uh, we'll see what we can do about fulfilling that on the while while the sky is being painted on the palette is cobalt blue Payne's gray ultramarine ultramarine violet transparent oxide red light red raw sienna burnt sienna and burnt umber way in the right hand corner is sepia all by itself and down in the little half pans that I have on here are Thalo Blue, Sleeping Beauty, Turquoise, Perylene Green, and Undersea Green. A lot of fun things happened in this painting while the sky is being painted. A little spritz of water there. Uh, the magic of the watercolor, of the water doing whatever it does, is really evident for me, at least, in this painting. I really had no plan. Uh, you saw the pencil marks before I started to paint, and that was in a general idea of where this line of uh, trees would be. But I had no idea that the background would do what it did. And uh, that was really a very pleasing, surprising kind of a thing. I had no intention of putting anything, what it, what looks like, another large lake and a tree line, maybe some mountains back there. I had no plan of that. It just did it. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's one of the things about watercolor that's uh, wonderful uh, to see happen. And the land here, uh, after I do some more work on the tree line to get it to be more fallish, the land lines and things in here really do it on their own with very little help from me and magic happens when you use watercolor um, it's it's a very interesting thing now that color is perylene green which is one of my absolute favorite greens that is a non-mixed uh, version uh, even mixing it with burnt umber uh, burnt sienna is, is really, and even on its own, it's just a beautiful green. One of my favorites. It's not too bright. It's not one of those garish greens that, uh, you know, you makes you want to put your sunglasses on or something. But these streaks here, strokes, um, are beginning to define sections of the land and it's really neat because of what happens. Um, you know, I had no intention of what you're going to find here in a minute. All this little stuff here, still using Pyrrhaline Green. Um, and a mix of whatever was on the palette. I do that sometimes if there's a couple different things on the palette. Different colors and stuff, I'll just mix it up with whatever I'm using and uh, it's in there anyway, right? But um, the little stream that turned out to be there, it was uh, unplanned. Um, yeah, just, and these little things there in the front, the white specks and stuff from the dry brushing, it just lends itself to the imagination. What are they? Stones, uh, rocks, and I've got the little uh, Da Vinci brush out now with a tiny little point because you can accentuate different areas to bring more interest to the viewer. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's just an amazing thing, standing up on that hill, looking down. You can imagine it all way what's in the background. But that's what painting is all about, imagination. Your enjoyment and the enjoyment of the viewer, of course. And now we're back to the Degado brush, which is my favorites but uh, this little bit of stuff going in here yeah I mean paint whatever you 
want. If you want to paint these paintings and follow along and paint and use your colors and your techniques and stuff and uh, feel free. If I'm of any help, I'm, I'm happy and if I'm not, then I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun and I enjoy paint painting is uh, very enjoyable therapeutic in, in ways thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to comment if you want to see a painting next week thank you bye bye